Good evening. <clears throat> this is the regular meeting uh, number nine dash for 9798 of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council, November 10th, 1997. Um, can we have the roll call by the town clerk, please? Chairman Groff? Here. Councilor Berry? Here. Councilor Beyer? Present. Councilor Fritz? Here. Councilor Jordan? Yeah. Councilor McGinty? Here. And Councilor Reed? Here. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Welcome, everyone. We have a full house here tonight. Uh, I'm sure we won't have a full house by the end of the evening, but uh, it's great to see so many faces here. The first item of business is citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Is there any citizen wishing to bring to the town council's attention any matter not on the agenda? Hearing none, uh, we go to the fun part of the evening. This is the one real benefit I get of this job. This is presentation time. And tonight's a pretty exciting time in that we've had a uh, uh, a great fall here in Cape Elizabeth with our sports teams. Um, the first presentation will be for the Maine Casco Bay Soccer Maine U13 Girls State Championship. Uh, Casco Bay Soccer, the club for those of you who don't know at home that may be listening, not only includes uh, Cape Elizabeth but also South Portland. And it's an organization that has uh, allowed many, many uh, boys and girls in our community to play soccer. And I think uh, if some of you perhaps saw the article in the newspaper about the tradition that we have of starting children young in the fundamentals of sport in this town, and the fruit is certainly going to come later in the evening, uh, later in this presentation when we honor our state champions. So the first thing we want to do is have the girls from the main U13, the Casco Bay Soccer main U13 girls, if they'd come up and stand right under the seal here. And I'm going to go over to the podium and Roy Dumphy and Bill Phillips are the coaches and if Roy would come up and Bill's not here. And hopefully at home we've uh, made the transition here over to this location. This proclamation states, Town of Cape Elizabeth, Town Council Proclamation, Casco Bay Soccer, Maine U13 Girls State Championship. Whereas the youth of the Town of Cape Elizabeth and in this case, surrounding communities, have a long tradition of participation in the sport of soccer as part of community service programs, privately sponsored activities, and interscholastic games. And whereas the Casco Bay Soccer U13 girls played many of their games this season against youth of higher ages, and whereas the U13 girls had a season record of 7-1, and one, losing only to a team from Manchester, New Hampshire, whereas the team scored 22 goals with only four against, and whereas the state championship game, the U13 girls won a two to one victory and a penalty kick shootout after regulation play did not produce a winning score. Now thereby the Cape Elizabeth Town Council does hereby congratulate the Casco Bay U13 girls state champions, their coaches Bill Phillips and Roy Dumphy, and all others who have contributed over the years to their development, which culminated in their recent victory and this is dated today and signed by all the members of the town council. Roy, congratulations on behalf of <laughs> uh, 
I'd like to thank the town council and the uh, like to thank the parents of the uh, girls here who uh, obviously put the time out to uh, get the girls to practice and to games. Uh, especially, we did have some girls from the other towns that have to drive a great deal. Uh, we had a short number of kids there this year, so we have also two girls from Scarborough, besides a girl from South Portland. I'd like to thank them especially. And uh, special thanks to Bill Phillips, who was the head coach, who really put a lot more hours and time in uh, than I did and deserves a lot of credit, who can't be with us is in Malaysia at the moment. Thank you very much. And now I would like uh, the state championship girls high school soccer team to come up and uh, stand by the seal. Congratulations, girls. <laughs> Girls, congratulations. It was a, a great game to watch. It was a great season for many of us who saw you play a lot. Uh, it's, uh, you represented this town well, and we certainly appreciate it. Now, is Charlie here? Come on. You don't think you're going to sit in the audience, do you? <laughs> You get to stand by me. Town of Cape Elizabeth, Town Council Proclamation, Cape Elizabeth Girls Soccer, Maine Class A Championship. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you. Whereas the youth of the town of Cape Elizabeth have a long tradition of participation in the sport of soccer as part of community service programs, privately sponsored activities, and interscholastic games. And whereas these activities often result in superior achievement due to the efforts of individual participants, skilled coaches, and dedicated parents. And whereas each summer our girls soccer team begin a season that requires countless hours of practice concentration on the development of athletic skills and game techniques, and whereas year after year of dedication culminates in a state championship game each season, and whereas on November 8, 1997, this culminating game of the 1997 season resulted in a 14-1-3 record and the second state championship in a row. Now, therefore, the Cape Elizabeth Town Council does hereby congratulate the Cape Elizabeth Girls Soccer Class A champions, their coach, Charlie Carroll, and all others who have contributed over the years to their development as superior soccer players in Maine. Dated this 10th day of November, the year 1997, and signed by all the members of the town council. Charlie, congratulations. <laughs> I'd just like to say thank you to the girls for all their hard work this year. Um, the results are, are worth all the hard work. I'd also like to thank people like Roy Dunphy and the other coaches in the town who developed these girls and make my job awfully easy as uh, just showing up and putting them through the motions by the time they get to high school. Um, I'd also like to thank the people of Cape Elizabeth for all their support this year, um, the administration, the school department for helping me along the way. Um, all of our playoff games were well attended and the games throughout the season, uh, even though some of our playoff games were, were rainy and a bit cold. Uh, they were Plenty of fans there to cheer the girls on and support us through on the way. So I'd like to thank everyone in the town for helping us out. <clears throat> and now if the Cape Elizabeth Boys Soccer Maine Class A Championship team would come up, I'd appreciate it.
Good game, Beast. Hey, John. Gentlemen, welcome to the town council meeting. This is a civics lesson. <laughs> it's a real thrill to be able to have you here tonight. Uh, I know the town council is very, uh, feels very privileged to have, have you here. I know the whole town is excited. Uh, Any time that you go into a tournament and you're the ninth seed and you come out on top, that means something good happened. The town council has this proclamation. Town of Cape Elizabeth, town council proclamation. Cape Elizabeth Boys Soccer, Maine Class A Championship. Whereas the youth of the town of Cape Elizabeth have a long tradition of participation in the sport of soccer as part of community service programs, privately sponsored activities, and interscholastic games. And whereas these activities often result in superior achievement due to the efforts of individual participants, skilled coaches, and dedicated parents. And whereas each summer our boys' soccer team begin a season that requires countless hours of practice, concentration on the development of athletic skills and game techniques, and whereas year after year of dedication culminates in a state championship game each season, and whereas on November 8, 1997, this culminating game of the 1997 season resulted in a 12-4-3 record and the third state championship in a row and the fifth in six years. Now, therefore, the Cape Elizabeth Town Council does hereby congratulate the Cape Elizabeth Boys Soccer Class A state champions, their coach, Andy Strout, and all others who have contributed over the years to their development as superior soccer players in Maine. Dated this 10th day of November in the year 1997, signed by all the members of the town council. Congratulations. I'd just like to ditto what uh, Charlie just said about uh, what the youth programs have done for us as head coaches. It's awful simple to put the players on the field and have them play when they're coming up through and they know exactly what to do to win. That's what's happened here. So I really don't need to say too much to this group, but a uh, real important person uh, is going to say a few words, and he was speaking for us a lot of the year, and he's going to continue it now, Ryan King. Uh, we as a team would like to thank the town council for honoring us today. Uh, it's a fitting end to an awesome season marked by great community support and not only through the playoffs, but all through the year, including the scrimmages and everything like that. So thank you from the boys team. Mr. Chairman, while the room clears, may I make a comment? Certainly. I'm really glad that everyone's here and that you didn't have to take time away from your homework to uh, receive your presentation. Congratulations. We're just going to wait approximately a minute so that individuals who uh, find this an appropriate time to exit can do so. Just the top sheet. Just, just, just that one, the, the green one. Thank you. Must have something in it you want. Yeah, the. See agenda. Now they're in the section corner. Mm. And just the yep. Remind me in a break, I'll tell you about. Moving on with the agenda of the evening, um, reports and correspondence. Are there any counselors uh, with things to report? 
Councilor Reed. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to report to those people who have applied for openings of our various boards and commissions that the uh, appointments committee will be meeting uh, and establishing appointments uh, during November. So if anyone is waiting for a call, uh, it will be shortly. Thank you. Are there any other councillors with reports? Councillor Jordan. I don't know whether this would be, class <coughs> excuse me, classified as a report or as correspondence, but I just want to thank the people who turned out the, the other night for the ceremony they had for myself and Cheryl, and uh, I appreciate the people that turned out. And I would like to thank uh, Councillor Fritz for really orchestrating that celebration. Uh, I'm sure all of you that attended um, were appreciative of the opportunity to celebrate the fine effort of two of our citizens here at the Cape. Are there any other reports and correspondence? Hearing none, we move on. Is there a motion concerning the minutes of previous, the previous meeting? Mr. Chairman. Uh -huh. Councilor Reed. I move acceptance. Second. Second. It's, uh, it's been moved and seconded to approve the uh, minutes of the October 15th, 1997 meeting. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries seven to nothing. Item 60. Public hearing general assistance ordinance amendment Ray allowances. Uh, Mr. McGovern, if you'd give a short introduction to uh, uh, this item. I'd be happy to. Uh, each year, the Maine Department of Human Services uh, recommend certain amendments to the local general assistance ordinances uh, throughout the state. This year, the, the amendments are not at all in the text of the local ordinances. They're simply in the total monthly allowed general assistance maximums. Uh, they're determined by the size of the family. For instance, uh, the maximum that someone could receive in, in Cape Elizabeth, a household size of three, would be $693. Uh, the amendments also provide food maximums. Again, a household of three, the weekly maximum would be $75. <coughs> and uh, monthly housing maximums in Cumberland County for a three-bedroom house, uh, unheated weekly, $159. Uh, heated monthly, excuse me, unheated monthly, 685 Those are typical. There's other allowances as well within the ordinances, but those are the ones that are recommended by the state and recommended for adoption by the Town Council this evening. We will now have the public hearing. Are there any citizens who wish to comment upon the general assistance ordinance amendment Ray allowances? Seeing no citizens rising, the public hearing is now closed. Um, at this time, are there any counselors that have any comments? Is there a motion? Councilor Jordan. I'll move they be adopted as printed. Second. Second by Councilor Barry. Any discussion? Hearing none. We vote. All in favor? Opposed? Seven and nothing in favor. The next matter is item 61. Uh, the issue of uh, the Paputic Club's annual licenses. I am a member of Paputic. I am going to recuse myself from uh, this particular matter. Uh, I would ask Councillor Jordan simply to, from his chair, to uh, act as chair. I'll have the town clerk give a brief introduction to the audience, to the okay. application. Thank you very much. Before you, you have the uh, completed application of the Paputic Club. It is a renewal application for a full-time malt, spirituous, and vinous liquor license. Uh, the application is complete, and we recommend uh, approval this evening. Thank you. I'll open for public hearings. Anybody in the public have any comment? 
here and now, I'll close a public hearing and move on to the adoption of item 61. I move the adoption, Chairman. Second. Been moved and seconded. All in favor, raise your hand. Those opposed, vote six to nothing. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Jordan. The next matter is uh, item 62. Um, prior to that, I believe, it's a public hearing on the design report from the Two Lights Bikeway Pedestri Pedestrian Path Design Review Committee. Uh, Mr. McGovern, if you could give a brief background. Yes, I'd be happy to, Mr. Chairman. Is I think everyone uh, who is remaining in the room is aware this issue has been around for some time. Uh, it was earlier, uh, has come to the Council a number of occasions. Uh, it was approved uh, by close votes on a number of occasions, I think four to three. After the first four to three vote, the Council referred it, uh, this as well as the, the then proposed Two Lights Road bikeway, uh, to a committee that was known as the P2 Committee, uh, the Pedals and Pedestrians Committee. Uh, that committee recommended uh, to the Town Council that the Two Lights Road project not be constructed and that the, uh, excuse me, that the Shore Road project not be constructed and that the Two Lights uh, Road project move forward. Uh, subsequent to, to that, the Town Council considered those recommendations and, you know, in essence killed the, the Shore Road project and voted to have design go forward on the Two Lights Road project. Uh, when they made that vote, the Town Council, they also established a design review committee uh, that has been meeting over the past year uh, to review the design. It's been chaired by Gary Beckwith and has consisted of a number of other citizens. And they have, uh, after reviewing the plans uh, and working with the town engineers, uh, OST associates, have recommended a design uh, that has been uh, circulated, that is posted here on the railing. Uh, the committee did not make a specific recommendation that the bikeway pedestrian path project should go forward or not. They simply indicated that if it should go forward, that this is the design that should occur. Uh, notices were sent out to uh, all of the affected parties along Two Lights Road, uh, indicating them that, that this issue uh, would be on tonight's agenda. And uh, is, we uh, also had a notice in the newspaper. In addition, uh, that committee uh, recommended, the, the, the more recent committee, the Design Review Committee, some changes uh, with the speed limits along Two Lights Road and there was also a recommendation uh, that came from the planning board that we ought to look at the speed limit in the area where Beacon Lane, which is a, which is a private road, private driveway, comes out onto Two Lights Road. And the chief of police is recommending uh, that the speed limit along Two Lights Road be reduced from where it's 40 miles per hour down to 35 miles per hour. That Wheeler Road, which is the small section of road where the Lions Club schoolhouse is, that that speed limit be posted as 25 miles per hour from either direction, and that the speed limit down near Beacon Lane, uh, that's 25 miles per hour as you go down over the hill towards Dyer Cove, that that be extended instead of just being easterly of uh, Beacon Lane, <coughs> that it be just extended westerly or southerly, depending on your orientation. Uh, so it's, it's a little bit before you get to Beacon Lane, it drops to 25 rather than a little bit after. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure many of you are here for the express purpose of communicating your thoughts to the town council. I would ask, and in fact will enforce, that no individual uh, speak for more than three minutes. I would ask that those individuals who wish to speak line up. I would also ask that you listen to other speakers and if, in fact, you're simply agreeing with someone else, that you can indicate that with not, not having to repeat everything that someone right before you or a few speakers before you said. Um, we will stay as long as necessary to hear everyone who wishes to speak tonight, uh, unless the council overrules me by a motion. Everyone will speak once and once only. I would ask that if you have comments concerning uh, the speed limit, that that be in the recommendation that be incorporated uh, into your remarks. 
I would also remind you that what we have before us tonight is the design report from the Two Lights Bikeway Pedestrian Path Review Committee. There is not a motion before the Town Council tonight to review uh, everything that's happened with either bikeway. So I would ask as much as possible you stick to the issue at hand tonight. After the, so, so you all understand how things will go, after the public hearing is closed, each town councilor in alphabetical order so that there's no uh, thought that anybody, there was any special preference, will be given an opportunity uh, to tell you what his or her thoughts are on this matter. If there are appropriate motions, those motions will be decided. Now, I have one request, and that is that we come from a, we live in a wonderful town, and there's obviously differences of opinions on some issues. That does not mean that we can't be civil. That does not mean that we can't be respectful. And I hope if we accomplish nothing else tonight, we will be able to show the rest of the citizens of this town that we can conduct public meetings in a civilized and respectful fashion. So with that, those words said, uh, anyone who would like to, at this point in time, participate in the public hearing, if they would uh, line up starting at the podium and form a line back toward our broadcasting booth. <coughs> And I would ask when you approach the podium that the first thing you do is state your name and please give your address. We should begin before the line is fully formed. You can begin. Uh, Mr. Chairman and Councilors, my name is Louise Sullivan and I live at Journey's End, which is number 72 Two Lights Road. It's a dwelling that's been there since um, it's been since the town's record since the town was incorporated in 1775 there was record of that house there so it's one of the old houses on two lights road um, and I have I am opposed to to the bikeway even though I am a bicycle rider myself and a walker but I have been looking at the comprehensive uh, plan and I just want to read a little teeny part from page one there is a strong community consensus that the town should take all reasonable steps to preserve the rural character of Cape Elizabeth. In this context, rural refers to the appearance of the countryside, its open space, its lack of intense commercial development, rather than a stereotypical way of life. This document goes on to say that assets and values not to be compromised are specifically identified on the face of the earth in this plan and they include significant views and access to those views, wetlands, shoreline, and areas of poor soil and other, other um, inclusions like the Great Pond and the Greenbelt. Two Lights Road um, has one half of the length of the proposed area for the bike path, one half of the length is a resource protected scenic area for wetlands. One half is under rural protection as active farmland. And so I ask you tonight whether or not um, whether or not we're giving the people in the name of giving people a, a safer roadway and a recreational space we are destroying, a, we're going to destroy a beautiful neighborhood. Will we so suburbanize and stylize that neighborhood that maybe our only last visible historic link with Cape Elizabeth's fishing and farming past will be lost. As I understand it, what we will gain from this by accepting the federal funds, what we'll gain from this is one paving of Two Lights Road. And in exchange, 
we give, we, we agree to pave Two Lights Road to the federal standard. That's going to change Two Lights Road forever. And if we decide that it's not worth that one paving, that Two Lights Road is, more, is worth more to us than one pavement, that we will bear the cost of one pavement in order to save the character of that road, we would have control of the design. We could control, we could, we could pave the shoulders, but it wouldn't have to be four feet and four feet and turn it into this highway. So thank you for letting me say what I feel tonight. I, I would hate to be in your shoes. I know that road. I love that road. I walk and ride on that road. And I value everything I see there. I think it's a good road, and I hope you choose not to pave it and make it into a federal bikeway. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Uh, Tiamen Town Council. My name is Ginny Jordan. I'm a resident of Cape Elizabeth, have been for 52 years. I live at 81 Two Lights Road. Uh, my house also is a very old house. It's on the Cape Historical Society list. Uh, when we got our house, bought it 50 years ago, we had double doors in the front. It was really drafty. The snow seeped in. We had to have an entryway put on, and our house was so close to the road that we had to have a special hearing in order to have that entryway added on. And now, <laughs> having more land taken from me, I will really be pretty close to the road. As some people said, I'll be able to serve coffee right out my window <laughs> to people going by. Um, Really, I feel there are very few, but I have been, I have five children. We all bicycle. My husband bicycled, and I bicycle. The children bicycle. I walk daily. Um, I really am opposed, and I hope you take this in consideration. Thank you. Um, Roy Dunphy. I'm at uh, 23 Columbus Road. I'm a resident there. Uh, I've looked over the uh, plan and I think that it was well put together and I fully support that as a father, a bike rider and with three children. I'm also speaking for my wife who owns a piece of property on the uh, bike path, uh, map 40, lot number five, the Hydeman property. Uh, she's developing that and she is in favor of this bike path also. She thinks it would help and the uh, future development of this town will generally go to this sort of development because there is no further improvements that can be done because of the wetlands and the property is not able to be developed, but we will continue probably to develop the town to improve it with projects like this, and I think it's very worthwhile. Thank you. My name is Richard Sullivan. I live at uh, 72 Two Lights Road. I was a member of the, uh, of the uh, commission to uh, plan the design of, of the Two Lights bikeway. I've, uh, I've been a bicyclist for as long as I've lived in Cape Elizabeth, and I'm probably one of the few uh, bike commuters from uh, Two Lights Road. I'm, I walk every day on Two Lights Road, and, and frequently ride my bike there. Uh, in spite of this uh, background, I'm uh, opposed to uh, the bikeway. And in thinking about why that is, I, I, a phrase came to mind um, that was a, a principle I learned in early in my medical training, which is in the Latin, primum non nocere, which in English means, first of all, do no harm. And this is a principle which has I've relied on over the years. It's helped to keep my patients out of trouble. And I think it's a principle which uh, each counselor could apply to this project. A year ago, the prior town council considered the project on, uh, on Shore Road. And at that time, very strong arguments were put forward in favor of the project, uh, very strong arguments in terms of uh, safety issues, very strong arguments in terms of the utility of that road and you know, of that bikeway and uh, connecting several town centers and acting as a means of, of um, commuting. And in spite of these very strong arguments, the town council voted that project down. 
in part, I think, because of this principle of, first of all, do no harm. And they recognized that that area of Shore Road was unique, beautiful, historic, and really felt uh, uh, humble enough that they didn't feel that they wanted to destroy that 200-year-old uh, uh, site. I think we can apply those same principles in looking at the Two Lights Road project. Um, the arguments for safety are much less strong on Two Lights Road than they were on Shaw Road. I've lived on both roads and I felt I was taking my life in my hands walking on Sh Shore Road. Two Lights Road, um, I've never felt in danger. Uh, the issue of utility was very strong on Two Lights, on Shore Road. Um, whereas Two Lights Road is, in essence, a dead end street. <laughs> and the, um, in order for people to use the proposed bikeway, they have to walk or bike uh, a, a long distance. Um, on the other side, we have the same issue of preserving something that has been there for 200 years. Um, and so I ask you to remember this principle. First of all, uh, do no harm. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Graham Pillsbury. Uh, I was born and raised on Tula in the Two Lights area, and I currently live at 76 Two Lights Road. Uh, with my wife and three children all under the age of seven. <clears throat> uh, I'm opposed to the to this this bike path. Uh, I think something needs to be done uh, as far as biking, pedestrian way, uh, but I don't think this is the one. I, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's right. Uh, from an aesthetic value standpoint, uh, the people of Two Lights area moved here for a number of reasons. One of these reasons is its rural appeal and aesthetic value. And, and there have been very few changes in the Two Lights area over the past 20 to 35 years uh, that I've been there. Uh, and I think that's very appealing. Uh, as, as Louise Sullivan was saying, it's, uh, it's one of the older areas. Uh, safety, you know, regardless of what many people will say about speed, uh, I think this widening, as I call it a widening, uh, will actually increase speed. I mean, you can promise all the, the, the speed traps and cruisers, uh, but it's going to increase speed. I mean, it's going to be a mini Route 77, let's face it. Uh, on the issue of necessary, is it necessary? Uh, you know, when I, when I uh, drive along Spurlink Road, for instance, in Scarborough, uh, there's a lot of bikers on the Spurlink Road, and I'm a bike enthusiast. I've mountain bike, road bike, uh, quite a bit out in Colorado as well, and, and, and been done, done a lot of biking and do it with my kids. But I find the real enthusiasts sometimes don't even use the bike path. Uh, and that, that concerns me. Uh, as far as the planning of this, this so-called comprehensive plan, uh, it amazes me that so much time and money was spent on this, uh, this plan, and, and very little attention was given to the danger areas, uh, being Hannah's Hill, Pheasant Road intersection, State Park entrance, and the S-curve by the Tooth Acres and the uh, Hansons, where you enter Two Lights Road. Now, Pheasant Road intersection was actually, uh, some, some changes have been made uh, because of uh, uh, questions that were raised about the safety of that uh, corner there by the Lanes property. All these areas are very dangerous, as is. And now we're going to throw uh, families biking and walking into these danger areas. I just think we're asking for more trouble. Um, and Mr. Groff, if I could, if I could quote you, the best I can remember from the last meeting we had down in the uh, the lower room there, of all the Two Lights area people were invited to. Uh, uh, I would ask that if you're going to quote me, you do it quickly because your three minutes is up. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and, and with respect, sir. Uh, and this is our private conversation because I did not speak at any public meetings. No, you spoke to me. You 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 privately. Uh, you said that uh, I don't give a damn about Henry's trees, Henry Berry's trees, or any other, anyone else's lilac bushes. And, and, and frankly, I do. I, I think that's part of the aesthetic value. And I, I just think that's a shame to... Uh, to, to well, sir, I think we're, your time's up. A point of order, I, okay. I believe that you're meshing together a few quotes that I did. The lilac tree bushes are on Shore Road. But right. Thank you very much for your right. time. Thank you.
My name is Peggy Farnsworth, and I live at 211 Two Lights Road. I am very opposed to a bicycle path. I think that Two Lights Road, if there is are signs posted for low speed, I think it would be sufficient for the bicycles. Um, it's only a matter of a few months out of the year that people are biking and I think it's just a crime to take away property that from residents that have lived here for years and years. And so. Good evening. My name is Ray Chevenel. I live at 189 Fowler Road. I've uh, biked and walked, but mostly run along uh, Two Lights Road and just about all of the, the uh, roads in towns, uh, the roads in, in our town. Um, I, I believe it is good to preserve the rural character of our town. I also believe just as strongly that it's important to get out and enjoy it. I believe in a, uh, the saying, a sound mind in a sound body. And so I, uh, I'm in favor of our town encouraging exercise and uh, encouraging folks of all ages, whether they walk or, or, or ride a bike or uh, a jog or whatever, to get out and enjoy this beautiful town. So I, uh, I see after looking at everything I've tried to see and, and hear and read that uh, this, this project uh, does uh, provide a, what I think is a reasonable balance between the competing interests and I uh, recommend a favorable vote by the council. Thank you. Hello, my name is Eileen Calico, and I live at 55 Hannaford Cove Road, where I have lived for the last 19 years. And I have spent many of those years walking five out of seven days on Two Lights Road, either by myself or pushing a baby carriage with my now five-year-old daughter, who I hope will soon ride her bike on that road. Um, I moved here from a very rural part of Maine and I moved to Hannaford Cove Road in the Two Lights area for a reason. And that reason to me primarily was because of its beauty, its rural nature, the fact that there were working farms, which reminded me of where I used to live in Shapley, Maine. And I can only say that I appreciate the time, effort, and thoughtfulness of those people who participated in the study and of the town council in raising this as an issue. But for those of us who use the road on a regular basis, 12 months a year, not two or three, um, I would strongly support lowering the speed limit. And I found that once the road or the sides of the road were graded every so often, that it made it very usable, very feasible, without at all changing the rural nature of the way it looked or worked for those of us who utilize it. Um, I can only echo some of the things that some of our neighbors have said, that this is irreplaceable. The nature of the way we live and how we live in Two Lights Road, and Two Lights Road is a dead end. It is not on the way to somewhere else. Um, that I would urge you to consider the fact that we can give up federal money and we can come up with solutions for safety, like have been recommended of speed limit or, um, I mean, I'd be happy if someone enforced the speed limit, or signs or whatever. But I do believe that there are plenty of alternatives besides changing the character of an invaluable resource that we have in Cape Elizabeth, never to be replaced. Thank you. Herbert Dennison, Spillink Avenue, lifelong resident. I too am opposed to changing the characteristics of the bikeway. 
I think this town council and the planning board ought to look at safety issues. Bikeways, I don't think, should be beside travelways anyhow. You should be looking at some of your other states and towns. They should be a, off away from the travelways. 77 is a dangerous bikeway, in my opinion. And I, I think to change the character of, and, and to cause the people along that road, like some of those houses are pretty close uh, to the road already. Uh, I thought that's what we were trying to do was to keep the town in its rural character. So I urge you to turn down the federal monies. They had, they were broke a couple years ago, but now we've got plenty, but maybe we ought to put it on the debt and <laughs> set the bikeways away from the travel ways, wherever you may build them. Uh, my name's Wayne Brooking. I live on the far end of Two Lights Road. I, too, am opposed to the widening of the road, and I hope you'll scrap the project. Thank you. Hi, I'm Eleanor Redmond. I live at number 1235 Sawyer Road, and I'm here to speak against widening Two Lights Road. I was on the last Comprehensive Planning Committee, and as was said before, um, we found that the unique nature of Cape Elizabeth was worth preserving. And in fact, we were at one of those meetings one night, and we were looking at the comprehensive plan that came before, and we noticed that there was a designated intersection that was to be saved for its beauty, it was hoped. And that was the intersection of Fickett Street and Sawyer Road, which was widened, was straightened, the trees were taken down, and I have to tell you, we lost a very unique, charming part of town when we did that. And it will never be the same again. People tell me the same thing is true of Route 77, that it was once a charming, beautiful road. Now, by no stretch of the imagination can I say that. Um, I think we move here for this unique place. We want to preserve it. If you change it, it is always changed. The more pavement you put down, the more the town looks like the rest of America and no place special. Thank you. My name is Hubert Strom. I live at 164 Fowler Road. And I've been biking on Two Lights Road for about 20 years, year round. And uh, I can tell you, a lot of times it's not safe. You're really taking your life in your hands on Fowler Road. You really are. I've been wiped out a couple of times, but fortunately I landed in the ditch, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still here today. And uh, it really isn't safe. A lot of times, you know, when you've got snow and you've got ice and you've got potholes and you've got all kinds of things like that on the edge of the road, uh, there really isn't a safe place for you to go, when, particularly when there's cars coming in both directions. And uh, also, I've been biking a lot more recently, and I've noticed you're even more at risk on... Uh, on two lights road. I, I just think it's very unsafe. And uh, a friend of mine, whose name I'm not going to mention, uh, told me about an experience where a tour, a tour bus was coming in one direction, and a UPS truck was coming in the other direction, and he said, if I hadn't hit the ditch, I'd be, uh, I wouldn't be alive today. So if for safety, if for no other reason, we really should go ahead with the plan. David Wing, 80 Oakhurst Road. Um, if we're going to use Latin, there's another phrase, quae nocent docent, that which hurts teaches. Now, there, there's been a fatality on Two Lights Road. How many more do we need to get the picture? Yes, there is not through traffic but it's one of the busiest roads in the town, and not everybody on that road is from around here. I think that for the town to have the opportunity to bring that road up to safe specifications without putting a tremendous amount of the town's money into it is uh, a pretty darn good deal, quite apart from increasing its utility. As far as the questions of irreparable harm to the scenic character of Cape Elizabeth, um, 
Any road with as many tour buses on it as that road has is not a rural road. That is gone. Thank you. Uh, my name is Fred Joshua. Uh, I live at McKinney Point Road, which is, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, is a uh, dirt road that's off a of park road. So uh, two lights ro uh, road leads right into that. Um, as far as the rural nature of the uh, the road goes, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about how the road road ever got paved in the uh, the first place. If we'd have been here a uh, hundred or two hundred years ago, would still be dirt. Uh, so uh, I don't think the pavement itself is the uh, the the, uh, the determining factor in whether or not the uh, the road has a rural character. Uh, as far as safety goes, uh, the portion of the road that many of the people spoke about in terms of uh, biking is, is uh, wide open, there are no hills, and it's very easy for a car to, uh, to see a pedestrian or a bicycler. Cresting the hill that's uh, close to Hannaford Roads on, on either side, going either way, north or south, uh, is, uh, is a fairly blind uh, situation. It's not unusual for uh, me, and I drive a caravan, I can imagine people in a car that are a little lower, to crest that hill and be surprised by either a pedestrian or a, a bicycler. And in a situation where there's also a car coming the other way, which is also not visible, uh, can make for a pretty tense situation. So I think from a safety perspective, uh, certainly the, uh, the section of the roadway that uh, is around that hill needs some work. Thank you. Ken Maxwell, I don't live near the Two Lights Road, but probably I have the most land that's affected by it. And <laughs> I'm not here with any great ax to grind, but they'll at least let you know that I know it's being considered, let's put it that way. And Two Lights, to me, is a narrow road. And a walker or a biker who is going with the traffic they better have a rear mirror or something behind them so they can be prepared to hit the ditch whenever a car comes up behind them. But there are a lot of other roads in the towns that's the same way. Uh, I feel for them, but that's the way it is in many areas of our town. Um, we walk a lot on Spring Avenue, but when a car comes up behind you, you step over and let them by. It doesn't make any difference whether they're on your side of the road or whether they're good enough to go on the other side. Uh, I do notice that uh, the six or seven feet to being yanked off my strawberry side of the road, but uh, that doesn't bother me horribly much, although if I lived in those houses across the street that were close to the road, I would probably be concerned a lot more. I am somewhat concerned there, of a, like across from the Kennedy House, if they put that full bike wire path in there, it will cut into the banking quite deep. So there'll have to be a lot of grading to do to a, run a slope out to the road. Uh, they'll have to create an area there where the water will run down by the road and it'll be even deeper and far worse than it is now. Uh, I'm not going to tell you I'm horribly against it or I'm horribly for it, but uh, a full-fledged to what they're predicting or what they're placing there seems like it's more than necessary, but I'm fully in favor of cutting the speed limit down. I, I, in cultivating my strawberries and things, I, I swing out over the road sometimes and I, I wonder where the traffic's coming from and where it's going. Do I keep thinking, well, maybe they did put a bridge to the island down there or <laughs> something, you know, because it is a real, they come by there fast, and, uh, and they come over that hill by Sullivan's heading back towards the town, and you can hear the cherry bomb mufflers go as they speed up there. So reducing the speed limit and enforcing it is, to me, a, a real good thing. And if I was Ginny and you put that, Ginny Jordan, and you put that bike path uh, in as it's projected there, I'd certainly want to keep in good, good touch with the street plow because I wouldn't want to leave my window open because that's where the <laughs> snow would go when the plow went by. That's how close it is. And, 
And with my strawberries, I'm not worried about that so much, but uh, it's uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my name's Dave Griffin. I live in Channel View Road. Uh, I'm an active bicyclist. I did serve on the committee. But the two issues that I think uh, that are important to me is that in serving on the committee and viewing some of the property that if we don't pave this road now uh, with the funds that we have already given to the federal government and they're returning to us uh, some of our tax dollars to do this at this point, that our tax dollars as a taxpayer in the town will have to come to repave that road again and I think that issue really needs to be addressed. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Uh, my name is Eric Messerschmidt. I live at 39 Longfellow Drive. And before uh, Eric speaks, I want all of you at home to look at this guy, and he's the one who broadcasts all this for your viewing pleasure. And I've always wanted the opportunity in public to give him a big hand. <laughs> now, go ahead, Eric. Um, I, uh, I recently got my driver's license, um, and uh, I use it a lot but I also bicycle a lot. Um, I, I constantly um, bike during the summer, um, and I prefer to travel that way. Um, and I, as, as far as people saying that uh, by adding a bike path to Two Lights Road uh, would, would, not, would take away the rural character of the road, I think that's baloney, personally. Um, the, by adding a bike path, you add bikers and you take away from the cars because the people traveling either to the park or traveling along the road, they're, they're using bicycles, which is a, a form of transportation which doesn't pollute. Um, it's, it's a lot safer. Uh, people get exercise through it. Um, you're reducing the amount of cars that are traveling through the park because people, instead of traveling uh, through cars, um, are, are biking to the park. I think that's... Um, important to realize that that increases the rural character of the road because there aren't many roads in the United States where you can ride your bike to a state park from your home or um, from you know from the school um, and and be able to do that safely and I I mean I I'm really sort of horrified by the fact that people are willing to jeopardize my safety um, as a bicyclist because they're scared of reducing the rural character or losing a little bit of land from their property. I mean, I may be the kid someday who's biking, and because they didn't wide, widen the road, you know, four feet on one side, I could get hit by a car. And I don't understand why people are scared of maybe losing a bush or losing a couple feet off their property to, to jeopardize my safety or, you know, fellow students, classmates of mine. And I... I'm completely in favor of this. Thank you. Uh, I'm Gary Beckwith. I live at 10 Oakwood Road. I would like to speak tonight in favor of the project. I would like to have the council uh, keep in mind that I would speak in favor of any type of project within the town. I'd like to give you a little bit of personal history. I won't take long. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I moved here when my folks came back to Maine after World War II in November of 1945. I was an adolescent. I spent my eighth grade year upstairs here. Uh, my transportation at that time was walking or riding my, uh, quote, victory bicycle. I rode all over town, into South Portland, into Portland, uh, out to Silver Sands, which is now private property that you can't go to anymore, to Crescent Beach, which was private property at that time. Uh, I can attest to you my thoughts going back to what I observed then. Uh, Two Lights Road was then uh, rural. Since that time, there has been almost 
uh, a doubling of the houses along the road. Um, we'll talk about the traffic. In those days, there were very few automobiles and a lot more courtesy on the road than all of us have to deal with now, walking, biking, or driving. Uh, there was no Brentwood. There was no shopping center. Uh, and I've watched the town grow, and I've, I've lived here a long time as well. And in that growth, I have approved of the way the town has gone for the most part. And like many of you, I am concerned about uh, the development and traffic patterns. I have continued to be a bicyclist throughout my life. Twenty years ago, I cycled across the country, camping out every night. I can't tell you what a valuable, lifelong experience that has. I've cycled to work until my retirement across the infamous Million Dollar Bridge. Uh, I know what a paved shoulder can do. Now, I'm asking you to think with me. I gave you a little bit of history of 50 years back. What is the Cape going to be 50 years from now? Are we going to accommodate those people who want to, for reasons of economy, ecology, or personal health, go out and use our roads and leave the cars at home? I implore you people to put this project forward. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Mary Bostwick. I live at 8 Dyer Lane. Uh, that's a little dirt road uh, from uh, Two Lights Road. And I'm here tonight to um, oppose the construction of the bike path. As we all know, Two Lights Road is a very small road. Uh, it's hilly. It has its bends and turns. And it is, granted, it is not a throughway. Uh, um, however, during the summertime, when there are the buses come down and the sightseers come and the local TV station says, oh, go out to two lights and see the hurricane. And you're on your way home from work and it takes you 45 minutes to get from the beginning of two lights road down to the end of it because the cars are parked on both sides. I can only see that widening of the road really will not benefit the bicyclists as much as it'll benefit the tourists and the visitors who come to see the storms down at Two Lights Road that cause a terrible traffic jam. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Patty Medina and I live at, live at 20 Waterhouse Road here in Cape. I have biked uh, the Two Lights Road as many as, as the other bikeways in Cape for over 15 years. Um, I also served in the committee, and I want all of, you, all of you to know that a great deal of thought and concern was given to every single property owner to try to minimize the impact that went on to their property. Uh, to think that the bikers and the tour buses and the walkers are going to go away, it's not real, very realistic. They will continue to be there, and the concern of the safety of everybody involved should be the first concern. So I'm very much for this bikeway, and I hope that the money has been spent. At some point, will have to be spent in the future, and I ditto everyone that has been in support of this project. Thank you. I'm Sarah McCall, and I live at 4 Avon Road, and I appreciate the opportunity to, again, face this issue of the, the bike path. I was on the original committee that looked, the Pedals and Pedestrian Committee, that looked at the whole issue. And I, I have not been here to hear everyone else's testimony, but I, too, am in favor of the two lights, road, bike path. And I speak primarily from knowing that the committee did its work very carefully, as Patty Medina has just noted. 
um, but also uh, from the perspective that um, Gary Beckwith's note that what is Cape going to look like 50 years from now, I would hope that it will look like it is accommodating to pedestrians and bikers and um, I would also hope that we don't look at back on an accident. Um, and I went out today just for one last bike ride with my children and um, was concerned enough riding on Old Ocean House Road that I didn't choose to be there, um, which has the same problems as the no shoulders on Two Lights Road, um, and chose again to be on 77 because of the wide shoulders. And um, I, it, the safety is just for me to be able to get out of the way um, enough so that there's a margin of error. Um, if I had another four feet, I would feel much safer riding with my children on the road. Um, I've looked at it from a variety of perspectives. Being a property owner, having a mother that lives in the community that um, is primarily a driver um, and a very conservative person, I've talked to her about it. Um, I would just very much appreciate a bike path on Two Lights Road. Thanks. Yes, good evening. My name is Pierre Hansen, and uh, I am representing my, uh, speaking for my mom who's here tonight. She lives at 3 Two Lights Road. Um, I know we're both very concerned about the safety along the road, and uh, from, from where I sit or stand, uh, I'm out there every day cutting the grass or raking leaves and stuff, and I see a lot of the drivers coming around the corner where we live. And um, it's mostly, for me, it's a speed thing that isn't, um, people are not slowing down, and, and the speed limit uh, is just not being enforced, that, that the, the speed limit that stands right now. Uh, I know it's... I've walked along that road. I've gone down to the ocean when the tides are very high to see the storms, and it is very dangerous walking along the road. I, I don't know what else to say except that um, my mother runs an antique shop uh, there, and um, one thing that she's taught me about uh, as, as applying to antiques, you, you don't uh, take a sander to a fine antique and strip the patina off, and to me this seems almost a similar analogy with the way we're approaching this, the, the road, I think there could be possibly other ways to make the road more safe without such a drastic uh, plan that's been proposed as, as uh, they spent uh, the money to propose this plan. Also, I'm not convinced that some of the measurements that have come up are um, actual my, my neighbor, David Schumann, uh, just before we came down tonight, presented me with a piece of paper that showed some discrepancies that he was very concerned about, and he's been active. Uh, almost every day I see David measuring um, across the way, and quite often we get together and he confers with me about what he's doing and tells me um, what he's come up with, and there are discrepancies, and I'm very concerned about that. We're concerned that the right approach is uh, applied to this serious situation of safety. Um, and getting back to the speed issue, um, very, I know my mom and everyone along that road is very interested in lowering the speed limit and enjoying the rural character of the road, which I think is just an incredible road to go down leisurely, you know, not at 40 or, you know, speeds any faster. I mean, it should be 25 miles an hour or, or less to enjoy it, from my way of thinking, and not to take, any up, uh, take up any more of your time, but thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is uh, Robert Mothel. I live at 452 Old Ocean House Road. Uh, I think the issue here is more speed than anything, because I, as I said, live on Old Ocean House Road. There are anywhere from 10 to 15 miles an hour over the speed limit at all times. And I ride bicycle on Old Ocean House Road. I think in widening, widening Two Lights Road is going to increase the speed further. The, the bike path that is on 
seventy seven as it is right now is not utilized every time i pass somebody they're on the white line not using the four four and a half five feet whatever it is to the right they're right on the white line and i have to go out around them anyways and that's on seventy seven so i think it's more of a speed issue than it is a width issue thank you Hi, my name is Peter Mullen. I live at 44 Two Lights Road. And just two points I, uh, I had. One, the, the rural nature is going to be changed when the road gets paved. Uh, it's, it looks like a rural road now because it's not paved. And sooner or later that's going to hap happen. And uh, I think the additional few feet on either side isn't really going to change the nature of the road that much. Uh, and the, the other point is, through this process, I've been watching uh, pedestrians as they walk across, uh, uh, walk in front of my home. And if a car is coming in there uh, at the point where the car is going to hit uh, uh, past them, they get off the side of the road and get onto the sand. Uh, a, a bicyclist doesn't have that option. They'll, they'll wipe out if they do that. And just uh, speaking for my wife, my children, and myself, uh, we're very much in favor of the project and hope that it goes through. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Steve Simons, 18 Brentwood Road. Uh, as one on the opposite end of the age scale from young Mr. Messerschmidt uh, <laughs> and a biker, I'd like to say that I fully endorse his statement. Uh, he is speaking for youth, the next generation. I hope the council hears that, and I say ditto to his comments. Thank you. Brian McCarroll, 23 Broad Cove Road, Cape Elizabeth. I am totally against this. I've biked, I've run it for 34 years. I have never seen any more of a problem there than I have on the speedway of 77. I think it's a speed problem. Go to Falmouth. I've been driving that road that was just finished, and they did the same thing that we want to do. It's a disaster. I don't know how the older people are going to walk across the street, whether it be to the store or whether it even be up the street to a neighbor's. It's a disaster. It's even difficult getting into Skillens, which used to be very, you know, very easily uh, accessed. I do think everything Mr. Bothell said right was right, and I think Mr. And Mrs. Dr. and Mrs. Sullivan were correct. I think it would take some of the younger people another 20 to 30 years to realize that that still is a rural community and we owe it to those neighbors. We owe it to those people who have lived there and those people who are off of Hannaford Cove Road to consider this. They have brought this up three different times. Lots of money has been spent on the studies. I think it's a disaster. I think you ought to consider it. I hope you vote against it. Hi, my name is Ann Carney, and I live at 139 Two Lights Road, right by the park entrance. It would be right at the end of the uh, proposed bike path. And I just want to make one point, which is that uh, in, in deciding how you're going to vote tonight, if you could concentrate on the design, because I want to speak both in favor of the bike path, but especially in favor of this design. A lot of time and effort went into trying to accommodate the concerns and interests of everybody who lived along the road, as well as the concerns and interests of the people in the community who would use the bike path. I think it's a really good design. Um, the project, as it is now conceived with the federal funding, would allow us as a town to design a path which actually, in some places, shifts the center line of the road to accommodate the older houses that are closer to the road and to change the dangerous areas. There's one place where there's a rock encroachment and things like that. And that's something that um, we shouldn't give up lightly. I mean, if we're going to change that road even a little bit to make it safer, um, we should tr take advantage of this excellent design and also the opportunity to have the funds to, to put into place a really well-designed bike path. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Good 
before we have um, a motion, and I know this is unusual, but before we have a motion, either way, I'm going to give uh, uh, each counselor an opportunity um, to speak on this issue and also an opportunity for any counselors to ask the consultants who designed the bike path any questions they have. Uh, I would appreciate it if uh, counselors could keep the remarks under four minutes. Um, and we're going to go in alphabetical order. Uh, Councillor Berry. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, six months ago, <coughs> I asked the uh, people if they would like me to be on the council, and uh, 900 people voted uh, yes. At that time, I had uh, three planks in my platform, uh, so to speak. And I would just like to review those quickly. One was prudent use of taxes. Uh, the second was a preservation of natural assets. And the third was respect for citizens' wishes. And uh, I would like to address each of those very quickly. Um, as far as taxes, this project started out at $148,000 on September 9, 1996. By April 15th, it had grown to $261,000. And our most recent uh, figures today uh, show $290,000 as a projected maximum. So it's well over a quarter of a million dollars now for that one stretch of Dead End Country Road that is proposed to be used for that. Uh, when I uh, heard of this project, I looked into the, le I inquired about the legislation, uh, and uh, I was told that the uh, so called ICE T funds, that is the uh, in state uh, transportation uh, funds, were. Uh, to be used. And I checked that statute out, and uh, I know this uh, broad uh, interpretation of that statute, but as I read it, it, it says uh, in uh, section, one section here, no, uh, no bicycle project may be carried out under this section unless the Secretary of Transportation has determined that such bicycle project will be principally for transportation rather than recreation purposes. And I think this is clearly for recreation purposes to ride up the two lights road because uh, I think Dr. Sullivan is the only one who said he's, he's gone to work on his bicycle. So I don't think that this is truly in the spirit of the intended use of these funds. Uh, a project is uh, to be uh, undertaking to construct a particular portion of a highway. And uh, transportation enhancement is allowed, but it's supposed to be in conjunction with a project. Uh, so I think that this, the use of these funds are not truly in the spirit of the so-called ICT legislation. That's, that's one point that I question. Um, as far as uh, the preservation of the natural assets, I think the people who have spoken here tonight uh, put it very well that the Two Lights Road, once uh, widened, will never be able to be uh, returned to its uh, present state. And the precious rural aspect of the Two Lights Road uh, can never be replaced once it's gone. The comprehensive plan, which uh, is, uh, has been uh, made after a lot of thought for the town of Cape Elizabeth, uh, has been quoted tonight. Uh, it, uh, seeks to retain the rural character of the town of Cape Elizabeth. And it points out that uh, prior to the uh, promulgation of the plan, that there has not been aggressive enforcement of the protection of this uh, rural character, and they seek to do better to do that. Uh, the Two Lights Road, I think, was never intended to be a boulevard. It's a dead-end country road in a residential zone. It's zoned as residential. There is a non-conforming use at the end of it that draws a lot of traffic down there in the summertime especially, and uh, that's uh, widened somewhat. It's caused an increase in the traffic down there. But uh, it was never intended that the Two Lights Road, I don't think, should be uh, changed in character. Uh, as far as the citizens' wishes, you've heard them tonight. The people who live on the Two Lights Road in that neighborhood don't want their neighborhood changed. I think the year-round taxpaying residents of that road ought not to have a plan forced on them. There are plenty of places down toward Crescent Beach and so forth where uh, bicycles can ride. And uh, I don't think that the, the residents of Two Lights Road year-round for the sake of some seasonal bicycle riders, uh, frankly, I, 
I don't think that they've seen that many uh, down the two lights road. If, if the intent is to increase the number of bicycles, well, I don't know if that's wise. Uh, so those three points, I, I think uh, I, I have made some general observations I have. Those who support the proposal are concerned that it's now dangerous to ride in the traffic, which has been sharply increased uh, down the, the two lights road. Uh, I think if you widen the road, the motorists coming along will see the uh, widened road and say they can go faster. I totally agree that the speed limit should be reduced and enforced. I think that, that the enforcement, take Black Point Road and Scarborough, you go over 25 miles an hour out there, you'll get a ticket. In three weeks with a cruiser and a radar, that situation on Two Lights Road could be improved if they're speeding down there. I think that's, that's obvious. Uh, the, uh, Widening the road and painting a stripe will not slow the speed of cars. Uh, Mr. Dennison tonight made the point that uh, on Nantucket Island and parts of Cape Cod and other areas, they have the road for the travel way, then a buffer strip, and then the bicycle path apart from it. But putting a bicycle path just by riding a strip down the middle of the road or on the side of the road, four feet on either side, is not going to separate the bicycles from the motorists necessarily. The speed is the problem, and that can be handled otherwise than by this plan of changing the rural character of Two Lights Road, I think. The present plan does not correct the hill which blocks the vision. It's to the right of the map, as you can see it here. Uh, it's, I think it's been referred to as Hannah's Hill tonight. Uh, that hill is a mound, and as the cars come over that mound from the state park heading toward in town, there is a, a block of vision there. This plan does not address that hill because it would involve the blasting of ledge, I'm told, which would be very expensive. And although there is some money here, that uh, is not addressed in this plan. I think that's a flaw in this plan because as one of the residents down below toward the center of the map says, and, and everybody who lives there knows, when the cars come over that mound, they see a straight ahead, a straightaway right ahead of them. And that straightaway says, now we can go. And by the time they're going down to that straight area beyond Pheasanton Road, they're going 50 miles an hour. Now, that area should be addressed and corrected. Also, there's a culvert there that needs some uh, attention. And we were told by the engineers in the meeting that the, uh, the so-called low spot, the wet spot there, uh, could be addressed with a uh, catch basin but they said the catch basin is not going to be enough to accommodate that. If we take this plan, then the town has to take over the whole road without any state assistance. And the state will say to the Cape Elizabeth, no, you take care of that. Uh, I think that an alternate plan of, of paving along, as Mr. Maxwell said, along his uh, strawberry patch on the shoulders there could provide some widening of the road in that area. It's straight anyway. It, it seemed inconsistent to me for the previous council to turn down the shore road with its many curves and rated by the state as a dangerous area and take this two lights road which is fairly straight except for one corner and, and that hill and go down I don't think that the the plan addresses that uh, Councilor, I've let you go almost twice as long now if you could well I'm going to, uh, yeah, I appreciate I, it I know I, I, hope I know it's an important issue to debate here because this is hmm. important uh, 25 years ago there was, or, or more, there was a Fort Williams plan which was proposed for high-rise housing with federal money. And there was a committee that proposed a very nice plan. Think of that today and uh, think if you would like to have uh, high-rise housing in Fort Williams, that precious area. The same thing could happen to the Two Lights Road. Basically, I feel the expensive construction of bicycle paths along the Two Lights Road to benefit the seasonal bicycle riders should not be done against the express wishes of the year-round residents who make their homes there. Uh, accordingly, I'm going to vote no on this proposal, on this specific proposal. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Byer. Thank you. Uh, this is a very complex issue. I think there are a lot of points to be mentioned, and I'm going to limit myself to those that I think are the ones that will help me make my decision. The first point I'd like to make is that I think too much we've defined this as a bikeway, and I think it's important to remember that, at least in my mind, perhaps it's more of a sidewalk in some cases, because people will walk and jog and run as well as ride bicycles. And I think that's a perspective that's important to have in the back of our minds. 
the issue that I then want to talk about is safety. Uh, I certainly support lowering the speed limit as the police chief has recommended. I think that's a very good idea. I also think that there are parts of this road which are dangerous for everyone, including people driving, because when you come over that hill, as one of the speakers said, and you encounter the pedestrian or the bicyclists uh, right there on the side of the road, you have a tough choice to make yourself, and I don't want to have to make that choice. I think that's a very important point. I do think it's dangerous. I do think that the bikeway, as it's called, the sidewalk, would reduce, uh, I don't say eliminate, but would reduce some of that danger. So the safety factor weighs high in my mind. Uh, I want to compliment the committee because I was very concerned, and I continue to be very concerned, in regard to the impact, and I know it's the town's right of way, but in regard to the impact that it has on the rural nature of this community and on the front yards of the people who live there. That's a very important point. I think, though, that the committee did a very good job and literally wove the road down that pathway in such a way so as to very much minimize the impact to the people that live on the road. And I compliment the committee for that. That was very important to me, and I appreciate the fact that I think you did it very well. So in my mind, it comes down to trying to balance out keeping things as they are, which I tend to favor, and dealing with the improvement. In this case, I think the safety factor is more important than the negative impacts, and I will support moving forward with the bike path. Thank you. Councillor Fritz. Well, I've, I've gotten an awful lot of calls and, and letters on both sides, and tonight I think we've heard both sides of this issue, too, and a lot of good points. In, in making my decision, I, I had to consider how I feel when I'm walking and riding my bike on that road, and I've done it many, many times. Um, I, I feel plenty safe on the straight area of the road. Um, I think the sight distance is good. I think cars have, have, um, can speed up or slow down in order to, to pass uh, bikers and walkers. I don't think that section of the road needs to be widened. I don't feel very safe in the area where the, the hill and the dip and the curve that, that's beyond Hannaford Cove Road. And I think this is a problem area, but this plan doesn't address the problems that are on, on that section. I think the shoulders in that area could be widened by a couple of feet. I think the hill could be taken down, possibly. Um, but unfortunately, using the federal money doesn't allow us all that flexibility that I think would fit dealing with the problem and, and keeping the rural character of the road. The regulations are saying we have to have both four feet on both sides of the road. I'm convinced that that straightaway section, if it's four feet wider on both sides, will subconsciously have people driving faster. And I think then if you invite people, more people to use a bike path, then you're putting a combination together that I think makes the road less safe than it is now, and you will have lost the rural character of the road. So I think it makes more sense to concentrate our own town money to fix the area that is really a problem, the hill and widening a small amount on the shoulders where, where there is the hill and, and um, south or east of, of Hannaford Cove Road. So I will vote to oppose uh, accepting the federal money for this project. Thank you. Since my, uh, I'm next in the initial game, I will go. Hmm. Um, I was the individual who voted against Shore Road, and I did it not because, if you recall, I was opposed to bikeways, but because I was of the belief, which I am still of the belief, that the parameters of the design set by the council could not be accomplished, and I would not vote to spend substantial funds 
to come up with a design that, in my opinion, was doomed to failure because of the structure of what the town council voted the design had to look like. And two lights was not the same issue. Uh, there was a design that could be done. Residents of the town should understand that we have spent approximately $37,000 of town funds to design this bike path. Um, it is my understanding, and if the consultants please correct me if I'm wrong, but there is a very limited encroachment because of this design on the space, by that I mean the space from the paving to any particular house. I mean, it's been a masterful design, weaving in and out. If we build this bike path, just so we get the numbers straight, the town can and maybe will spend up, out of our tax dollars, another 20000 at the most. For that, for that, we are going to get a bike path that will then be paid for by state and federal funds. But it's not just a bike path. The entire road will be paved. There will be $10,000 for the dry well that now floods uh, at the Jordan, floods over the road. There will be other culvert work done. There is no money in the town budget to come up with a pie-in-the-sky solution that we can do a little bit with town funds, we could blast here, we could blast there. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not going to happen. What's going to happen is either we build this bike path as part of a regional network and get our road paved and improved with the best possible design possible, to allow people both now and in the future to come to the state park. It's not a country road with no designa designation. There's a state park at the end. And then there's a commercial establishment down further at the end of the ocean. This isn't a country road anymore. And as far as not being a proper use of federal funds, well, that issue has been discussed in detail. There's been letters written to the state. The State Department of Transportation has written back. That's just not correct. This is contemplated by the legislation, and it is an appropriate use of ICT monies. I, in every decision I try to make as a counselor, and I know there's going to be some of you that would dispute this, my guiding principle is what impact will this decision have 10, 15, 20 years from now? That's why I'm, and I believe that what's going, and we'll see this later tonight, there's going to be another piece of property that comes up tonight, and it's the same type of situation. What about 10, 15, 20 years from now? Unless we take affirmative steps now and channel bikers, and have facilities so people can have options other than their car and do that now, we are not going to have those choices later because anybody who thinks that road is going to be less traveled in the future simply isn't looking in the same crystal ball that I am. For that reason, I am going to vote to support this bikeway because it's fiscally what's prudent. It's the safe thing to do, and it also, in my way of thinking, it makes a statement of what type of town we want to live in, and that is a town with rural character and a town that encourages multi-use of our roadways. Thank you. Now, um, Councillor Jordan. I don't know if I can keep up with your speech, but I'll try. <clears throat> but I see this uh, project as one of those that you, the state comes along and gives you a bundle of money, and what you have to do is live by their rules because they're putting in the money. 
one thing that bothers me, and it bothers me real bad, they've had a lot of, lot of problem down there since I've lived in the Cape, and they haven't been able to correct it. And I'd like the manager to uh, say a couple of words if I'm on the right track. Then we have got to correct that problem because the road is going to be turned over to the town. Is that correct? This, pro this project provides $10,000 towards helping to alleviate it, it uh, would provide for additional dry wells in that area. It, it, it's not projected that that would totally take care of the problem. And upon the completion of the project, the town would be responsible uh, for that area. Thank you. And the, the other thing that bothers me a little bit, you people stop to realize they're getting eight feet more pavement down there, four on each side, and that bothers me as far as a rural country road. I would I would support three feet and I would support the four feet on one side, but I am not ready as at this point to support four feet on each side to make another eight feet on that road. So those are a couple of my points that I feel the safety but I think if they lower the speed limit and take care of the speed limit, they'll, they will uh, handle that part as far as the speed goes because I think most any road in the Cape can take a little tension some, some time or another with the police department because uh, there's always somebody that wants to overdo whatever the speed limit is. and. Uh, the part, the other part that bothers me is being too close to somebody's house. And I know they've worked it around and uh, kind of went around each, everybody's property to make the road fit. But I think of uh, a homeowner there that I would like to know, but if they take four feet off the sides, they're not going to have a, a three or four. I mean, four or five feet left, and I think that's pretty close. Maybe they could go farther the other way. I don't know. But at this point, I'm not going to support it. Councilor McGinty. Well, first of all, I don't think it's pie-in-the-sky policy for this town council to implement roadway policy or improvements um, based solely on, solely on federal standards. I think that we should implement policy that directly affects the needs of the people of Cape Elizabeth. And I think that if Hannah's Hill needs to be fixed, if it's a dangerous location, which I think it is, then we should fix it. And if the intersection at Wheeler Road needs to be redesigned, then we should redesign it. And the same with the park entrance. Um, I think that goes for any road in town. If we need to make our roads safer, we should do that. Um, I don't think we should be dictated by the federal government what to do. Um, I was just reading an article regarding the AASHTO standards, which are the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials. And a couple of their principles are that as in order for a road to be safe, it must accommodate drivers traveling at high speeds, even speeds considerably in excess of the legal limit. Another principle is that safety at high speeds requires width. In other words, you build it wider and they will go faster. And it also states that uh, roads and bridges all become wider to accommodate the very fastest drivers. And another statement in here, I'll take it out of context, it basically says that a road needs to be 30 feet wide to accommodate cars traveling 60 miles an hour. And that's pretty much what we're proposing here. Um, I think that where the road needs to be, you know, I'm, I'm not opposed to looking at some dimension other than four feet, uh, whatever that might be. Um, but I think that, um, you know, I'm probably the most fiscally conservative person on this board, with the, maybe the exception of uh, Councillor Jordan. But um, we haven't had the vote on taxes yet. Um, <laughs> and so I'm more than willing to take uh, the federal money to help us out, but this has become more than a dollar issue for me. Um, uh, I think we should do what's right for Cape Elizabeth, fix the problems that need to be fixed. Um, and so I can't support this design. I can support some work being done, but I can't support this design. 
Councillor Reid. Well, since this just failed, and everyone knows I vote to support, I would like the record corrected on a couple of items, and that is, um, in terms of the taxpaying year-round residents having more weight than other people, I think we need to uh, discuss the fact that every citizen has the same weight. I would like to commend the committee for moving the road uh, and for taking care to uh, the people who live on the road. I think it's important to note we had 27 speakers tonight, 16 support, 11 opposed. Of the calls and letters we got, it was overwhelmingly in support and sense. In January of 1995, when I presented to the then town council, which consists of only one person who's sitting here tonight, 433 signatures in support of the Two Lights Road improvement, um, I would like that entered into the record again. Furthermore, excuse me, this is just because I'm talking, not because I'm emotional about this issue. Uh, regarding rural character, I have a son who goes to college in Vermont. No one is going to suggest to me that Vermont is not more rural than most of uh, southern Maine, at least. And almost every road improvement from here to Vermont is paved shoulders. The reason for that is because paved shoulders have been proved to lengthen the durability of the roads and also lowered the cost of maintenance long term. Regarding Two Lights Road as a rural dead end road, whether people know it or not, uh, people use Two Lights Road to get to a state park, the ocean, and Kettle Cove. This is a major, would have been, a major infrastructure improvement. There was no taking a property, as one of the speakers suggested and was not corrected, that the only person who had an issue was outside of the scope of this project. It is very unfortunate, in my view, that the town council took the rear view mirror approach to this decision and not the windshield view. Thank you. What we're going to do at this point in time is uh, the chair would solicit a motion on the speed limit issue or the recommendations from the chief of police regarding the speed limits. Before we have the motion, I would ask the town manager to read the recommendation by the chief of police as to the speed limit. Yes, the chief of police is proposing the following recommendation to be considered by the main department of transportation one that the speed limit along two lights road be reduced from 40 miles per hour to 35 from 40 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour in that area where it's now 40 that wheeler road be posted as 25 miles per hour from either direction and three that the speed limit posted at 25 miles per hour easterly of beacon lane be extended to a point westerly of beacon lane uh, post at just behind the sight distance of a seated driver on Beacon Lane at Two Lights Road. So moved. Councillor Byer moves uh, adoption of the uh, police chief's recommendations as to speed. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councillor Jordan. Further discussion on this issue. Uh, Councillor Barry. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I've spoken with the police chief. I believe that there's a a window of uh, parameters there uh, in the speeds and I think that uh, the speed limits as cited are excellent except that I think that uh, 35 instead of changing the 40 to 35 I would be happy if it were from 40 to 30 because they're going to exceed the spin limit a little bit and if it were 30 miles an hour I think that would be more uh, in keeping with the safety issue for that road which is uh, um, where, where the uh, well, are, are you I'm, going to, I'm going to move to amend the uh, motion to change the 35 to 30 miles an hour. Does the does the individual who made the motion uh, accept the amendment? No, no, okay. no. Uh, okay. Do you withdraw the amendment? I'll second the amendment. Councillor Fritz has second the amendment. Uh, we will vote on the amendment. All in favor of Councillor Barry's amendment as seconded by Councillor Fritz, please so indicate. Opposed? Five to two opposed. 
Now we're back to the original motion uh, on the Chief of Police's recommendation. Is there further discussion? Councillor McGinty. I have a question on number three. That's the Beacon Lane uh, hosting. As I recall, the planning board has been working on an issue involving that, and I'd just like some background on exactly where this stands and, is, and what, if the planning board had a recommendation, what that was. Uh, the planning board was considering a public access waiver on Two Lights Road, a, a party by the name of Zorsky uh, put in the request. Uh, when the planning board considered that request, they approved the public access waiver, and there were a number of conditions. One of the conditions was that the applicant had to request the town council to consider a change in the speed limit. There was no condition that, the, that it had to be changed. The condition was merely that the request had to be made. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, uh, call for vote. All in favor of the motion? Opposed? Passes seven to nothing. Good idea. The chair will entertain a motion uh, on the bike path. I, I would Councillor Fritz. Um, whereas acceptance of funding to construct two four-foot-wide bicycle and pedestrian paths adjacent to Two Lights Road in Cape Elizabeth under the specific provisions of the federal ICT program does not allow adequate flexibility to address specific safety problems on Two Lights Road without losing the road's rural character. Therefore, the Cape Elizabeth Town Council does hereby direct the town manager to inform the Depar main Department of Transportation in writing that the town will not be moving forward with the proposed Two Lights Bike Path project and that the state and federal share of the project will not be used for the proposed project by the town of Cape Elizabeth. I second the motion. Just so the record's clear, I mean, I, I, that motion has not been previously furnished that to the council, is that correct? That's correct, but it's, it's very similar to the wording as it, it was addressed in the Shore Road bike path issue. Um, I'm going to ask that the, uh, for myself and uh, point of order at this point in time, I simply will not vote on something that I cannot read. And if uh, we have to take a slight delay so that uh, Xerox copies of this can be made, so be it, but uh, uh, I will raise that as a point of order. I do not think it's appropriate on a motion of this nature to uh, vote on an oral oral recitation. Mr. Chairman, just so people in the audience know, we were given two draft motions, pro and con, and members of the council had plenty of time in which to submit these, so it was ready for us uh, to be considered at this meeting. So I will make a motion uh, for a 10-minute recess to allow the town manager to make Xeroxes, uh, as a point of order, Xeroxes of the motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Council is in recess for 10 minutes. Soda, Rosemary. I uh, know, I'll say one quarter, so I brought some. Really? Yeah.
Sure? Council meeting is called to order. It is my understanding that each councillor has now been furnished with a handwritten, the handwritten motion um, made by Councillor Fritz. And to help me read your writing, Councillor Fritz, I would ask that you again read your motion. Whereas acceptance of funding to construct two four foot wide bicycle and pedestrian paths adjacent to Two Lights Road in Cape Elizabeth under the specific provisions of the federal ICE-T program does not allow adequate flexibility to address specific safety problems on Two Lights Road without losing the road's rural character. Therefore, the Cape Elizabeth Town Council does hereby direct that the town manager I'm sorry, direct the town manager to inform the main Department of Transportation in writing that the town will not be moving forward with the proposed Two Lights Bikeway project and that the state and federal share of the project will not be used for the proposed project by the town of Cape Elizabeth. And Councillor Berry, you seconded? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Is discussion? Councillor Reed. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, because I have perhaps a different level of knowledge than other councillors having served on the P2 committee. And because I have it from a very strong source that John Melrose and the main Department of Transportation is in fact moving towards a more community friendly um, implementation of uh, the ICE-T definitions as uh, Ms. Fritz has uh, put forward here. I would ask that we consider tabling this motion until next month and giving the town manager or appropriate staff enough time to see if, in fact, um, there is flexibility uh, since this motion says that it, it does not allow adequate flexibility to address the specific safety problems on Two Lights Road without losing the road's rural character. I feel that it would be inappropriate to vote for that unless we know for sure that that would not be allowed. Are you uh, making that motion now or allowing discussion to continue on this prior to making your motion to table? I would certainly allow any uh, other discussion. Right. Is there any other discussion? The motion to table has not as yet been made. There's simply still discussion on the underlying uh, motion. Is there any other discussion? Councilor McGinty. Um, I certainly would love to get some of my own tax dollars back and spend it to improve the safety um, of Two Lights Road where appropriate. Um, again, I'm opposed to this particular design. I'm not opposed to taking the federal money if we can do it in a more uh, community-friendly manner. Was that the? I made that up. Okay, whatever. But I, can, I mean I, the reference. I, I, I could support that, and I could, uh, although it's the tabling motion has been made, I, I could live with that. Other month, sure. Any other discussion? No, oh, I. Councilor, if I may. No, I uh, figure that uh, we've been down this road and we've had the hearings and we've. I think it's time to vote on it and move forward. If you want to table it and decide some way or another so you can change the votes, I think that's what you're up to. So I'm ready to vote. Any other discussion? D'accord. I'm sorry, Councilor Berry. I have a few questions from the town manager. Is there a, presently, uh, is there some deadline where if we do not notify um, the state that we are either accepting or not accepting these monies, that we would just lose the monies by failure to notify them by a particular time? They haven't given us a specific date. My other, uh, the other thing that I am also not interested in wasting the council's time if in fact uh, there is no reason to Councillor McGinty, if in fact, uh, uh, when you say specifically trying to tailor uh, the monies for use in our particular locale, um, 
in general terms, if you could, I'm just trying to make a decision in my own mind whether it's worth tabling. In general terms, uh, what type of design that encompasses a bike path, including repaving, obviously be repaving all of two lights and doing the, uh, the drainage work, what type of design are you theoretically contemplating? As I stated before, I think the hill is a problem. Um, the hill and the dip, if you want to call it that, what are you going to call that area? Um, area south or easterly of, uh, of Hannaford Cove Road. I also think there may be other areas, and um, you know, I, I think that the straightaway is, is fairly safe, and there is room to get off the road if you need to get off the road there, but I think that there may be other particular areas um, that we need to look at where we might put a, uh, a modest paved shoulder um, in areas that are particularly unsafe. Uh, and again, I've heard a lot of talk about redesigning the park entrance particularly and uh, the Wheeler Road intersection. Um, and again, those may be areas to make them more user-friendly for pedestrians and bicyclists as well as for uh, vehicular traffic. Um, but in any event, you would still, any proposal that you would envision or plan would not be a bike path uh, designated for bicycles along the entire length of this particular road? I'm not willing to cut a swath down through there and pave it, no. Well, Councillor Reed, have you had any?